Hey guys, this is Vortech, and today we're going to pick up our Unreal Engine C++ Fundamentals series, talking about data-driven gameplay, specifically using data tables. So we're going to look at how to create data tables using C++, how to expose them um, to our blueprints, how to bring in these various data types like F um, table row base and U data table onto our player character, and then also how we can use external files to populate our data tables. So let's get started. All right, guys, so let's dive straight into data tables. What we're going to do today is we're going to take our third person um, player character definition, and we're going to take this melee fist attack montage. That's just a property on this character, and we're going to replace it with a data driven or a data table that represents similar information. So we're going to pop in our, um, our montage, as well as some additional properties around that montage that we can then reference within our code. Now, this particular project is uh, continuing from our fundamentals part one, where we talked about structures. And it's also based off our player character series where we have this little guy who we're working on who runs around and punches stuff. Kind of cool. So we're gonna keep building on these lessons and adding more and more stuff to either overwhelm you or teach you uh, some interesting concepts around the Unreal Engine. So let's hop over to uh, Visual Studio and start looking at replacing this little animation montage with um, a data table. Okay, so if we pop open our player character header, the first thing we need to do is include our data table definition. So. If you omit this, um, you will get compilation issues and just generally you won't have a good time. So to bring in our data table headers, uh, you want to go to the engine engine folder and look for data table.h. And this is primarily um, the only thing you're going to need for this exercise. We don't need any other headers. Now, for the folks who didn't get a chance to read the blog post that's accompanying this video, um, data tables are essentially structs with more stuff. Um, so what they are is they're structures that define, or sorry, that inherit from this other structure called F table row base. And then the combination of those two definitions allows the Unreal Engine to interpret that struct as a data table and then it handles sort of it from there. So you don't have to worry about it too much from sort of tying it back to the engine standpoint. You just need to ensure that you inherit and decorate these things accordingly. So similar to our structure, we're going to create a new U struct and we're going to make it a blueprint type as well. We're going to call this guy F player attack montage and he's going to inherit from F table row base. So this one little line or this one addition through inheritance lets the Unreal Engine know that, hey, anything contained within this struct is going to be part of our data table definitions. So let's give it some properties. So we want to replace our montage um, as well as some of the attributes around the montage. So let's take a look at those first. If we scroll down to our player character header, the animation montage is defined here. So we're going to take this guy and just copy him over into our F player character attack montage. We're going to strip off some of these um, additional property decorators and we'll keep it a little bit closer to our uh, struct below. So we're going to say edit anywhere and blueprint read only. We're also going to say this is just a montage for a property name and we don't care about the class um, definition. Okay, and I'm just gonna correct this typo. So that brings in the montage attribute into our, um, into our data table. Now, the other thing we want to replace is the amount of um, animation sections that is defined per each montage. So if you recall from our previous tutorial, and let's just go back to Unreal Engine, um, Tutorial Resources, Animations, and then pop open the Melee Fist animation, or sorry, Melee Fist Attack Montage. In our previous lesson, we went ahead and we added all of these different sections 
that allow us to play back the punches at different points in time. And then, if you recall, if you, you go back to our um, CPP file for our player character, in the attack input function, we said, hey, generate a random integer between 1 and 3, and then pop that into the section definition, and then when we play back our montage, randomly start at each one of these sections. So since we're creating a data table, we can now also say in 32 nm section count, which is going to be another property that's going to allow us to basically say, hey, for this montage, there are X number of sections. And then we can programmatically inject that into this integer here. And all of a sudden, if our animation montage has 100 sections, this code will just pick it up and, and keep going. That's the power of uh, data-driven development, where you can kind of um, create these hooks for your data accessors and then just keep replacing them or growing them as much as you want, and your game will just kind of, you know, go with the flow. Okay, so we have our montage, we have our animation section, and then lastly, we want to include another property, and that is more informative. So I'm going to just create an F string of description, and what this guy is going to be used for is um, describing to us the contents of this data table when we're looking at it outside of our code. So if I'm just looking at the raw definition of a data table, I can say, aha, you know, montage section punch, um, three animation sections, and I can put a descriptor in here saying, you know, light attacks or heavy attacks or, you know, whatever I want that will just let me know or the designers know um, what they could pop in here to, you know, generate different um, effects from our from our game. So I'm just going to put in a little note here to remind me what this is for. This is the amount of sections uh, of start sections within our montage. And this is just a well, this is just a description. Okay, so with this guy defined. Um, what else we need to do is put in a property on our player, char player character where we can then instantiate and pass in these data tables. So we're going to pop this right underneath our animation montage. And we're just going to copy the um, property decorator. And this is going to be the um, melee attack data table. And we'll correct the spelling mistake as well. Cool. So this guy's going to be a class, but instead of a, um, a struct or an animation montage, we're actually going to say u data table. And we're going to call this guy our punch attack data table. So let's now recompile and take a look at what this looks like within our engine. Oh, and we have a slight um, compilation exception, and that was a typo on my part. So if we go back to the header, you'll notice that I forgot to include the generated body statement as part of our um, struct definitions, even though it was right here below in our melee collision profile struct. So <laughs> let's just pop that back in and recompile. All right, guys, so with our project recompiled, let's pop open Unreal. I'm just going to close down this window. And looking at our third-person character blueprint, you'll notice we now have this new property that expects a data table to be created. But we don't have that defined yet, so let's go ahead and actually create one. So going back to our main menu, I'm just going to create a new folder under our tutorial resources section called data tables. And if we now right click and go to miscellaneous, we can pick a new data table definition. And when you say, hey, make a new data table, it will give you a option to select your row structure. And you'll notice our player attack montage is listed as part of that, along with some other um, 
predefined uh, data tables, but here's ours. And if we click OK, we are presented with the data table um, object. And if we pop it open, you'll notice it has the three attributes we defined previously, as well as this thing called the row editor. And what this guy allows you to do is now to punch in new rows into our data table. So you can go ahead and add, you know, sort of as many as you want. Um, but for the sake of our exercise, we're just going to take um, a bunch of these guys and clean them up and just do two. So the way this kind of plays out is the row name ends up being the key to each row for these three columns. So we're going to call this guy punch one as the key. For our montage, we're going to pick our melee fist attack montage. We know that this guy has three sections, so we're just going to type in three, and then we're going to give it a description. So um, let's say attacks um, primarily focused on punching. So that's our first row, and now let's create our second row. So we're going to call this guy punch two. Now you need to keep the row names distinct because this is a key value based system. So if you have the same key for these um, row definitions, they're just going to override each other. So it's up to you to kind of be aware of um, how this is structured and <clears throat> to make sure that you're not um, incorrectly pulling in the wrong thing or updating the wrong thing. So just be aware of that. Um, so let's go ahead and create the second row. It's going to be melee fist attack montage 2. This guy also has three sections and this is going to be attacks primarily focused on elbowing. Okay, so we have this little data table and he has two rows in them. Now what? Well, we have a couple of things we can do. If we close this guy down and we right click on it, you have two options. One of them is export as CSV and the other one is export as JSON. So we're gonna do CSV first and what this is going to do is create table. Um, it's going to create a file on your disk with a CSV extension, which, which stands for comma separated values. Um, and it's going to take those two rows and just dump them onto disk. Now, what's cool about this is you can go ahead and then re-import back that CSV file. And Unreal is going to say, oh, okay, well, CSV file, I know that file format do you want to turn into a data table? And you can say, yes, I would love that. And you end up getting a data table um, that you just dropped in from the disk. And we'll do that in a second. The other thing we can do is export as JSON. And JSON, so I'm going to call this just data table. It's going to bring the extension JSON. And JSON, similar to comma separated uh, value files, is just another format um, for rendering um, this information. And we'll take a look at that in just a second as well. So we have these two um, records now exported. Let's bring them back in. So with those two files now saved onto disk, let's take a look at what they look like um, when they're when they're persisted to the CSV or JSON files. So I've gone ahead and um, already prepared these guys here. And you'll notice this is our data table CSV and it includes these three dashes which denote our row keys. And actually, let me just pop open this guy so it's a little bit easier to see. So this dash represents this header definition. And then we have our montage, our anim section count, and our description. And then we bring in all the values and you'll notice they're comma separated. So that's a CSV file and if we went ahead and added, you know, more lines down here, then we said, you know, punch three and punch four, and I save that, I can very quickly now take this file and bring it back into Unreal. So let's do it. So I'll close this down. I'll get rid of this data table that we just created. And then I'm gonna take this CSV file and just drag it over into our data tables folder. And you'll notice, 
behind the scenes, Unreal said, hey, this kind of feels like a data table, but what data, tape do you, data type do you want to use for it? So we pick our player attack montage um, data table, and there it is. If we pop it open, you'll notice it has all of our rows nicely defined. And it brought in the two extra ones that uh, that we did for just the sake of the exercise. So let's do the exact same thing now with the JSON file. So we kill this guy. Let's close that down. And get rid of our data table. He's gone. Let's go back to our file explorer. Now let's pop open our JSON file. Which looks like this. So you'll see it's the exact same amount of data, but for anyone who's done any form of web development recently, you'll notice that the JSON structure um, is everything you've seen, you know, going across the wire over APIs and um, all the good stuff that's happening in web development right now. <clears throat> and it allows you to organize your data in a much more readable fashion. So you have these square brackets that denote this is a single object. <coughs> And it's also an object that is an array that has these multiple um, object definitions within it, comma separated. So one, two. And then we can also include a third one simply by copying and pasting this block and popping in a comma between them. So we'll call it punch three and we'll bring that in. So to bring that in, go back to your file explorer, take your JSON file and just drag it over. Unreal will again recognize it. We'll pick our montage um, data type or data table type. And there it is. And there's our third guy added. Cool. So let me just turf this row as we're only going to worry about these two montages. And now let's go ahead and actually implement this guy um, for access within our game. So let's give this uh, data table just a more meaningful name. So this is going to be our punch or our player attack montage data table. And then within our code, we somehow need to fill up um, this player definition or this player property definition with our data table. So to do that, we go back to our C++ file and right in the constructor, and again, we can kind of do it right underneath um, our montage definition. We're gonna lean on these constructor helpers to bring in our data table. So similar to the attack montage, we're gonna say load um, player attack uh, montage data table. And we're gonna say static constructor helpers. And we're going to say f object finder, but the class is going to be u, oops, data table. And we're going to call this the um, uh, player attack montage data object. This is going to be just temporary and takes in a text. And now the path to our data table definition. So to do that, go back to Unreal right click on your player attack montage data table and then go down to copy reference so we take that reference definition and then we can paste it into our um, constructor helper so then we do just a quick uh, null pointer check so player attack montage object data succeeded if it loaded correctly then we can instantiate it so player attack Montage, oh, um, punch attack data table. We're gonna say player attack montage data object, object. So this brings in our um, data table definition from this location if one is not provided by. <clears throat> Um, by our blueprint. So that's pretty cool. Now that we have it available, we can actually make use of this. So let's go down to the section of our code 
And you know what? I'm actually going to rename this variable just for consistency sake. So instead of punch, we're going to call this player. <clears throat> so I'm just going to rename this variable as well. Player attack data table. Okay. And let's go down to our attack input where we are currently playing back our montage and let's recreate this bit of logic now using our row definitions. So to do that, what we're going to have to do is um, look up the key definition of one of these rows from our data table. And to do that, I'm just going to create a new little section here that says if player attack data table is instantiated, then what we want to do is we want to say bring in this um, definition, excuse me, uh, bring in this definition from our data table based on the row of punch one. And we're going to do that real quick by first creating this static. Actually, let's create the definition. So we're going to say f player attack montage. And this is going to be a pointer reference. So this is going to be our attack montage. And he's going to say um, player attack data table find row and it takes on a couple of attributes so find row says bring me back one of those row definitions so it takes the row name which is our key it takes in these this context string which is just um, it's, it's an identifier and a piece of textual information that is just used for troubleshooting and I don't think it seems to have any impact on the actual data table definition um, but it is a required attribute, so we got to bring it in. And then lastly, this boolean that says, hey, do I want to give you some sort of warning if we're missing a row that you're trying to reference? And in our case, we want to be notified if that happens. So we're going to create a new F name. And we're going to say punch1. That's our key. And then we're going to skip over this guy for a second. And we're going to say false for the, or sorry, true for the notify me if there are warnings. Okay, so this guy here, he's a constant string. So we want to make a static const f string, and we're going to call this the context string. And he's just simply going to take in a textual representation of um, what are we going to call this? Player attack montage context. And then we can take this context string and pop it right in here. Cool. So this is going to say, yep, I'm going to bring you back a row if I can find one. Otherwise, trigger some sort of warning. So before we actually um, work on the data, we want to make sure that our attack montage is successful and doesn't have any sort of null pointers or anything weird going on in there. And when it doesn't, we can then go ahead and actually leverage this information. So the attack montage has these three properties on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this code chunk here and just put it within our conditional. And then we're going to start replacing values. So we're going to take this three and we're going to use our attack montage anim section count. So now it's between one and whatever is defined in the data table for this montage. And then we're also going to replace this montage definition with the one coming in from our table row. So we're going to say attack montage, montage. So you can see very quickly we've just modified some of our base definitions and passed in these data-driven attributes. And now we have a little bit more flexibility um, on our, um, on our, in our code. And we can you know, now pop in a pile of different montages and kind of iterate over this stuff. 
and it's all kind of handy. Oh, um, sorry, there's this little exception here, and that is because find row actually expects a data type, which I uh, skipped over earlier. So it's F player attack montage. So we're simply doing a little bit of typecasting um, by passing in these references. So let's compile and make sure everything still runs. Okay, so our project is recompiled. And now let's take a look at Unreal and what's going on with it. So let's play our game. And look, everything still kind of works. Not terribly exciting. How do we even know anything's working? So let's pop open our um, animation montage and now start messing around with it. So, or sorry, our animation montage data table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, our punch one, which if you remember is statically referenced within our code, and I'm going just to flip them. So punch two, because we need to have distinct um, row names, I'm just going to call punch x for now. Punch one is going to become punch y, or yh, and punch x will turn to punch one. Save, and replay. Now, when we punch, you'll notice we're automatically hitting the second montage and we're also playing back the appropriate number of sections as defined. Cool. So, what else can we do? Well, we can flip things back really quick. So if I take punch one and I remain punch x and I take this punch y h row and I remain punch one and punch two just to clean it all up. I can also say Take punch one and only worry about the first section of this animation. So there may be more, but let's say they're a work in progress and you know the animator is still plugging away on things, and only the first one's working correctly. Save, rerun, and now he only ever throws this one section. So I can very quickly modify data points uh, within these data tables and have them reflect in our application, in our game, um, correctly. So what else can we do? Well, because we included the animation montage, or the data table definition, rather, um, on our player character, we can also swap in now different ones. So let's go ahead and bring in one of our... Uh, let me just shut some of this stuff down and let's bring in one of our previously defined JSON files. So I'm going to pop it open and we are going to get rid of this and we'll even get rid of the second one and we're only going to bring in a data table with two animation sections. So I've gone ahead and modified this JSON file. I'm now going to drag it in as we did previously to import. I'm going to set it to the right data table. And there it is. So let's rename this guy. And this is only a um, two section attack montage. And now if I go back to my, my player character and I flip it um, from our default data table to this new one we just brought in. Compile go back to my game and now all I ever get is these two punches and look how quickly I was able to swap in a whole pile of um, assets and properties and definitions um, into our code so that's the reading side of data tables but we can also write to them which is kind of interesting so to do that what we're gonna do is just create an empty data table so right click within our data tables folder miscellaneous data table and we're going to say it's of player attack montage and we're going to say empty data table and then we're going to go back to our blueprint and we're going to assign our empty data table So we're not going to execute any punches because obviously that row would not be found and you know things are going to get kind of weird if we try to run it. But let's write to it. And we're going to write to it in our begin play. 
So when our character starts, we're going to insert a single row into our um, empty data table for you know further use. So this way you can actually have bidirectional communication with your data table within your game. You can write and read and you know sort of make all these different little adjustments. Um, now to write, very similar to the read, we're going just to check that our player attack data table is um, available and nothing's going on with it. And we're going to create a new F player attack montage struct. And it's going to be a attack montage. And then we're just going to set a couple of these values. So we're going to say attack montage um, montage is null. We don't actually uh, have one. We're not going to bring one in. Our attack montage montage. Oops. Our animation section count is going to be 10 and the attack montage description is going to be just a new um, string of um, created from begin play. Great. So that's our struct definition or our data table definition and now we're going to take this row and shove it into our empty data, data table. And to do that you simply need to make reference to the data table and add row. Now add row takes in just two parameters, so the row name, which is our key within our data table, and then the actual um, rest of the column definitions, so our, our struct. So we'll say add row, and we'll pass in a new f name and text and we're going to say um, new row and we're going to close this off and then we're going to pass in our struct attack montage. So now let's recompile and see what happens with our um, empty table row definition when we run the game. Okay so our uh, project is recompiled and let's go to our data tables directory and let's just pop open this empty data, data table. So you can see there's nothing in here. It's, it's, it's quite um, barren. And when we start our game, I'm just going to start it and stop it. Then when we pop open our data table, you'll notice there is our new row name. And just to show you that this is actually writing it, I'm going to go ahead and delete it, save it, just close it down rerun the game, stop it, pop it open again, and there you go. There's additional rows available for use. So that's really it, guys. You can now have the option of reading and writing data tables, and you have a couple of different ways of getting at them, either through JSON files or CSVs, uh, through your blueprint or your code. I hope this helped, and hope to see you guys next time.